So the moment you have sex with someone, it doesn't matter if it's a one night stand, you are married to that person. Sometimes you meet an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend of like 15 years ago or even 10 years ago and you realize that you feel like the urge to you know have sex with the person again that is because there's some level of soul tie that exists there so when you join your body with that of another body you become one flesh you become one and there is instantly a soul tie that has been created and at this point it doesn't matter if it's a prostitute you've gone to join your body with or if it's a mad person you've joined your body with as long as there is a joining of the two organs together you have created a soul tie soul ties are not necessarily evil contrary to popular opinion all right some people once they hear the word soul tie they just begin to imagine evil spirit and all of that so in this video i'm going to be talking about soul ties how they are formed and how you can break free from an evil sexual soul tie but before we continue, I'd like to explain what a soul tie is because I believe that some people don't even know what these words mean, like especially our younger generation. So what is a soul tie? A soul tie can be seen as a deep spiritual or emotional connection between individuals and this is typically arising from an intimate sexual relationship or a significant relationship between individuals. So from this definition, you can clearly see that soul ties are not necessarily created by sexual intimacy. They can also be formed by other significant forms of relationship. However, the key thing here is that before you are able to form some kind of soul tie with somebody or an individual, there has to be some level of significant relationship. I wouldn't want this video to be too long, so I'm going to break it into two parts. I and in this particular video, I'm going to be talking about the various kinds of soul ties that exist and the various ways through which we can actually form or create a soul tie. And then in a subsequent video, which I'll be uploading after this one, I will talk about how you can break away from evil sexual soul ties. So let's look at the various kinds of soul ties that exist. Number one, there is a soul tie between parents and their children. I mean, this is so obvious, but because it's not an evil soul tie, so most times people don't tend to look at that direction. The bond between a mother and a child can be seen as a soul tie. I'll give you a typical example. When my daughter, who is my first child, she was barely 14 months then, when she slipped and fell and then broke her mouth that particular morning, I felt so much pain. Like every time she opened her mouth to cry, I was feeling this pain like I was the one who had broken my lips and I felt like beating up myself. After then, I began to think and I'm like, how is it possible for me to actually feel the pain of another individual like the way I felt that pain? So it means that between me and my daughter, there is a soul tie, obviously, and it's not an evil soul tie. There is a connection such that I could feel the pain she was feeling at that time. For some fathers, it's their son. Like everything about your son is like it's so precious to them once you call a man and you tell him your son did this and if it's negative he can even slum at that spot and also in the same vein there is a soul tie that exists between every husband and wife is it always an evil soul tie not necessarily i feel and i believe that there is a soul tie between myself and my husband and I don't think it's an evil soul tie. Soul ties can also be created by vows. You know, you find people, especially in Africa, people who go to, you know, shrines to make vow, they commit themselves to these entities. You're already creating a soul tie between yourself and that entity or whatever spiritual entity it is. Couples or maybe a boyfriend and a girlfriend who are all feel that they are so much in love, not necessarily because they are having sex. Next thing they go to a shrine and say, we are joined together. We are coming back together. Wherever we go to, we will always come back together because we love ourselves. I know they make proclamations like that. They make pronouncements like that. And most times they seal it by cutting their finger or maybe exposing some blood from their body and then joining it together. Now, in this case, they have not probably necessarily have sex, but they have actually created a soul tie. And if they don't come back to places like that to make a counter pronouncement, 
that soul tie is going to stand for life. A guy who wants to travel to America, for example, and is leaving his girlfriend back in Nigeria, he goes to a shrine with his girlfriend and makes like a promise to her and makes this covenant with her and then eventually travels abroad. And then when he sees the light, so to speak, he doesn't want to come back and marry her anymore. He is already tied to her, whether he wants to believe it or not. Until he comes back to be do that thing or to annul that covenant, that soul tie is going to stand for life. So that is one way people also create soul ties without even knowing it. Another kind of soul ties that exist is a soul tie that is created by very intimate friendship. There are kinds of relationship you have with someone like you're friends with this person, you're, you love this person so much and not necessarily because you're having sexual intercourse with the person. But at the end of the day, you realize that you're so joined together, you're so deeply connected with this person that when the person is even feeling hot or something is happening to that person, you're already feeling it wherever you are because you know you're so intertwined with this person, you understand this person so much and you guys have a very deep bond. That is also a kind of soul tie, the sexual soul tie. This is the one that most people are very particular about. Now, talking about sexual soul ties, sometimes I look at comments that people drop and you know, the way people think and the things they believe, and I just laugh. The moment you join your body as a man or as a woman, the moment you join your body with the opposite sex and there is a joining, you're already married to that person. You see, all these marriage ceremonies we have, all this wedding, um, traditional marriage, church wedding, court marriage, these are all formalities just to differentiate we human beings from animals, just to, you know, place value on ourselves and to place value on that relationship. The real marriage is when you join your body together, you become one. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 24, the Bible says, and they too shall become one flesh. So when you join your body with that of another body, you become one flesh, you become one, and there is instantly a soul tie that has been created. And at this point, it doesn't matter if it's a prostitute you've gone to join your body with, or if it's a mad person you've joined your body with, as long as there is a joining of the two organs together, you have created a soul tie. So we have to get this right and we have to understand this thing. Some people don't believe in all of these or some people don't believe in spirituality or they don't believe that spiritual things exist. But whatever you want to believe and whatever you want to argue, the truth of the matter is life is more spiritual than physical and the spiritual controls the physical. So the moment you have sex with someone, it doesn't matter if it's a one night stand. Maybe you were drunk, you were tipsy, you just felt you needed to have some fun or you know to release the pressure like they all say it. Or maybe some people will say like they say in Nigeria, Konji won't finish me. Ah, Omo Konji, Konji na bastard. You know, things like that. And then you join your body with another person. You are married to that person. And the reason why sexual soul ties becomes a problem is because when you join your body with this person, eventually you realize that, wait, this is not the person I want to get married to, like for real. This is not the person I want to spend the rest of my life with, so to speak. And then you try to detach from that person, it becomes a problem. That is when you begin to have issues of like, um, I don't know why I can't, I can't seem to like get over this man or I can't seem like get over this lady. I think she knows how to just do it better or I think she just, do no, it's none of those things. It's actually not even love. It's not love. You actually tie it to this person. See, that is why you find it very difficult to be able to pull away from that person. Sometimes you meet an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend of like 15 years ago or even 10 years ago and you realize that you feel like the urge to, you know, have sex with the person again. That is because there is some level of soul tie that exists there. Let's take, for example, when you take glue and you glue two paper together, you put them together. When you try to pull them apart, what is going to happen is that that glue will remain on either part of the paper. So it is like you carry a part of this person with you. So imagine when you have like 10 body count or 20 body count, you're carrying like a part of these people in your spirit, a part of the spirit in your body. And you know, all of these spirits are trying to cohabit in one body. That is why some people just become depressed and a whole lot of things are happening to them.
So these things are real in as much as society today is like preaching sex, preaching free sex. People don't really believe in waiting for marriage anymore. People don't really believe in sanctity of sex anymore. It is real. And for those who have this understanding, they know that in this time and age, you can't just afford to live anyhow and just, you know, bed anybody anyhow because you're actually marrying the person. I'm going to make a part two of this video and that will be discussing how you can break free from this evil sexual soul ties. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Wendy Zill. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not done so yet and join the family. And to all of my new subscribers, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.